Why well, hell you viewers to play later? How we doing today? Yeah, it's a cold one out here in the Pacific Northwest. Winter is descending, but man, I got something really, really cool today. Seriously, I did. This, for me, is like an ultimate, ultimate flashback for a time, well, long ago when I was doing, like, Flames of War, Warhammer Fantasy, before they got rid of it. I was still playing around with Warhammer 40k 3rd Edition. The Vallejo Game Color, well, multi-pack. Holy crap, there is, what do we got? 16 colors in here. And all of this is bringing back great memories. Because I remember when Games Workshop Paints was still in that itty little pot with the screw-off top that looked like a bolter shell. And man, I thought those were like the ultimate paints. I'm like, man, you know, every month inside the White Dwarf when they're giving you that little painting clinic, they're, you know, putting down their colors, and you're like, okay, okay, but now i got to relearn something else? What the hell? Then I remember inside a White Dwarf, and this is what changed everything for me. They gave you a little sticker sheet. Seriously, it was like a big sheet that had stickers on there that had their names that you could put on your Vallejo Game Color bottles, which I thought was really interesting until you learn how to correlate, correlate it. Are they between the two? Like snake bite leather is leather brown. You know, fiery orange is orange fire. It, it, it just like blood red is bloody red. <clears throat> Bone white is like a dead white. I, it's just the same freaking pigments and everything, it seems like, but just a different name. And what revolutionized everything for me way back when was the dropper top. It made things so much easier when you're applying paint to your palette. You're not, oh God, how much should I get on the brush? Did I overload this? Did I overload that? And plus, well, thanks to Army Painter, I'm now adding a little, I'm now adding a little mixing balls in there. But let's get the adulting out of the way, okay? I am currently filming this on November 16th, 2022. Currently on Amazon for 16 paints, it's $28.50. Oh dear God, that is a deal. That is an ultimate, ultimate deal, especially if you're old school like me and love some of these older colors. So you get a bronze flesh tone. And like I've always said, okay, always, the more colors you can add to your palette from different companies, oh, it's a little thick. That's a good thing. You get ultramarine blue. I mean, of course you gotta get ultramarine blue, right? You gotta have the poster boys. Anywho, <laughs> a leather brown which, thank you, when you're doing Space Marines and other stuff, you got a lot of leather patches. The ultimate in basing material, Goblin Green. How many people didn't do their bases, just the round bases with the Goblin Green or the old square bases, Gobbo Green? Wasn't that like the standard way back when? I mean, seriously. Orange Fire. Ah, oh, Bloody Red. Dead white. Whites are always good to have. Seriously, they really truly are. Just like other yellows. Sun yellow. I always loved Beastie Brown. To me, Beastie Brown with a flesh wash was like the ultimate, 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 ultimate way to get you a good wood base color and you could highlight up from there. That's what I always did. Dark green for those Dark Angel fans. Oh. It's a great green color, like a blackish green. Oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Stonewall gray. Grays are a good thing to have, especially when you're doing, like, the tactical rocks of the Space Marines. Bone white. Beautiful, beautiful for how I highlight up my muddy snow colors. Black. Blacks are always good in any way, shape, or form. And yes, some blacks are different than other blacks in colors. God, that just sounded so bad. Like Corvus Black is so much different from a Baden Black. I bet that black is different than Corvus Black. Oh, Lord, I got Maybe I should reshoot that. I, I don't know. A straight silver. A gun metal. Bolt gun. Mm -hmm. Or lead belcher, as it's called now. Oh, you can never have enough of that. You just never, ever can. And the one that I swear you never think you're ever going to need, but you always end up using a lot of gold, a polished gold, like a shiny gold, kind of like that kind of thing. 
these things are phenomenal. And like I said, when I saw it, I knew I had to bring it to the channel. And if you're an old school dude like I am, don't worry. I'm going to leave a link right down below where you can go to Amazon, one click, easy buy. I love leaving those things down there because it makes it easier for you. You don't have to go searching. You just, boom, buy. Whew. I love these paints. Like I said, I fell in love with them. I really, really, truly did. I like the fact that the Army Painter has gone to like dropper tops like this. It just makes things to me so much simpler. It really does. I loved the Games Workshop bolt gun pots. I did. I, I love that little bullet pot. I thought those were really, really interesting. And I'll admit, like when the paint was done, I kind of cleaned the paint out so I had like the empty bolter shells around. I always had this idea of, I don't know, spray painting them like a bronzish and doing them up. I, I don't know. But if you're old school like I am, you're never going to forget the fact that sometimes when paint gets in there, it dries in place and locks it in place. So you got to get your vice grips out. And you're like, and all of a sudden the top of your bolter shell is like a jagged, raggedy mess that is like removing flesh like a cheese grater. But I don't know. I, I saw this and I'm like, I've got to get them for like, what is it? 0 0.57 fluid ounces. You get a full size thing at a really, really great price. I mean, you're almost, you're paying over a little over a buck for a paint pot. Okay. Just add in the little mixing balls, little agitators. Whoo, buddy. But still. Sorry, I didn't put these on bases or any on miniatures. You guys have been around for a while, you know. I figured I'd bring this paint kit to the, t you know, to the channel because if you're old school, like I've said before, I'm going to bring back memories. Now. We're at the best part of the video for me. We really, truly are. I like keeping these things short just simply because, well, <laughs> I got the intention pad with Squirrel. But still. Oh, man. I want to know your... You ready for it? Are you ready? I don't think you are, but we're going to do it anyway. Questions, comments, love, hatred, and anger. All that fun stuff right down below. You know, are you a Vallejo game color fan? Are you a Vallejo model color fan? Are you a Vallejo air fan? Let me know your thoughts on Vallejo because when I was like, way back when... They were one of the premier paints on the market. Now, I'm not really sure where they rank, you know? I'll be honest, I am really curious to get my hands on some Duncan Rhodes Two Thin Coats. I, I really, truly am. I want to see how those work, especially with the ranges that they have. <coughs> I have been very impressed with the Army Painter, but like Vallejo and Citadel, or Games Workshop, however you want to call it, they've always been kind of the standard for me. Now, if it means laugh, mention cringe, mention cry, made you do any of that during this video, please hit that big ol' thumbs up. It's only going to show love and support for the channel, and that is always appreciated. But there we go, guys. My quick look at that Vallejo 18-pack Well, game color. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope all of you are having a great day, a safe day, and I hope one day to meet all of you across the tabletop.